Drunk at the soda least 39, 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 39, 39, 39, drunk at the soda least 39. All right. And we're podcasting. Here we go. We're podcasting. Here we are podcasting. Casting. Live in effect. It is September the first. Second. No, it's the second. <laughs> it's the second. It uh, which is, uh, but it's interesting that you thought it was the wrong day because we're going to talk about hangovers today. This is episode 20. We have done one score of these. One score. Good word. And if you're watching, you're probably thinking, what is missing? Something yeah, is something, different. Something has changed. For anyone who's not watching right now, podcast. the setup is vastly different because somebody is sitting in Bob's seat. I'm sitting in Bob's seat, uh, but no one could ever fill Bob's seat or his shoes because no. they're size 19 and he's a seven foot, 393 pound man. The big show. Who happens to be camping today. Bob took a week off. He's slacking. Decided to go enjoy the outdoors with his, uh, I believe, his uh, lady friend. I heard that his ex- experience was intense. Intense. Bob is probably right now shit face drunk in the middle of the woods. Maybe also on mushrooms. Or... Also, Cam pointed out, what does it look like Bob camping like in a tent? Like, how funny is that? <laughs> You're terrified that there's a bear nearby, I feel. Bears are terrified. I he scares yeah, bears away. I said he probably just gets confused as Bigfoot most of the time when he's out there. Like right. he lumbers around looking for firewood. Like, right. Other, other campers are like, guys, guys, I just saw Bigfoot. People you just the noise of people zipping up their tents <laughs> everywhere they go. Yeah, I'm not sure where he went. I think uh I we'll have like... to get the four one one next week. I'm really excited for this week because this week is the first format without Bob. So me and Lars, we're gonna find out, we're gonna test. We're holding it down. Is there anything exciting to this show beyond Bob? We will of course find there out. Is. We will find out this week. Us, yes. Um, Welcome. Uh, we have a little uh, Lewis. Lewis, I can't even speak. I just had a stroke. Lewis is not here. By I way. just had. Uh, we're having. Uh, we got a little live studio audience. Make some noise, live studio live audience. Live studio audience in effect. A couple regs, eggs in the house. Here. I see some familiar faces. I see some. Yeah, faces yeah. That are equally familiar, but a little less than other ones. So. So it's Labor Day, September 2nd. You thought are. it was the first. It's true. Uh, we're here at 1830, obviously. Downtown we got Toronto. Uh, the Tubinators here. We got Cypher Picks, Woo! Kareem, and Jabril the Thrill. We have Sophie here as well, a Sophie regular. We have Cam. We're going to have a guest today. We're going to is... bring him on because right now we just have the beer. For anyone who's watching, the beer oh. is here to represent Bob. The beer is here to represent Bob. But then as soon as the guest comes on, then they will tell us. We're going to bring a guest to tell a drunken, disorderly, debauchery story. All this time, we've been focusing on Bob's crazy stories. You have a bunch of crazy stories. I do. But when Bob is here, all of our stories pale in in comparison to his. He, no matter what, is able to like 10 up. Our Which stories. is kind of how we started this in the first place, because we would all hang out on the on the you know at the pub or on the on the corner, and we tell our stories to each other like like we do, like we right. do. And then his his would just and then, yeah. become astronomical, and we're like, wow, I I don't mm, someone else needs to hear this. Literally jaw dropping stories, and you know this if you've listened to a bunch of right. the episodes. But we want we want to get you to know the, the the people asking the questions. You know, who are these yahoos? Who are these right. guys? Like, why are they asking what all are the these questions? Guys doing around? What here. what sort of degrees do they have in debauchery that they can ask these questions, right? Right? Well, we've alluded to your days in London and a few of my times as well. But we can uh, we can really die, dig deep. I heard you got into it this weekend, Labor Day weekend. You went to see some college buddies? Is well, that what yeah, happened? Yeah, apparently uh, I, did, I did the whole 21 partying when you're 31. And, you know, apparently it's, uh, you know... It's funny because people make fun of you when you're when you're thirty or whatever that you're not that old because they're older. They're like, "Yeah, get out of here. You're still whatever." Right. But then you go to party like you're twenty one, and mm-mm. so what does that mean? Mm-hmm. How were you like in your head? What were you thinking you were doing? Well, I, what I was, what I thought <laughs> is that I was I was going to a to a party and I was going to get completely wasted. 
But then so I you thought, were in just like fuck yeah mode. I like, was doing it with the boys. I was, like, but I knew what was coming. I was like, I I've done this a few times. I had these weekends before, so I kind of had a formula. Like I'm not buying liquor from the liquor store. So you're just going beer. beer only. Yeah, well, I okay. bought a little bit of wine for dinner because we were having like a nice little fancy dinner. Okay. So that that might have turned out to be a demise because I ended up mixing. You know, like next thing you know, he's got a nice scotch that we all need to taste. So I'm tasting that. And then uh, apparently, uh, so if you said there was tequila, <laughs> <laughs> that'll and do so, it. So, you know, now we're up to four. We're up to four things being mixed. So you leave Toronto. You were going to Cambridge to see your buddies. Like Cambridge, yeah. And you're like, okay, I've done this before. I'm going to totally go get systematic. super fucked up with some of my best friends ever. But I'm going to be smart about it. I'm only going to drink beer. Cut to, ah, uh, well, we'll also get some wine for dinner. Then scotch yeah then there being anyone want scotch right here and then tequila well i don't remember that right anything there was, else there was a hot tub and two blunts as well so wow <laughs> <laughs> and a hot tub and, and two, two blunts, blunts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry so we're gonna hear from sophie here in this a is second. sophie so i don't think oh i don't think i have anything new to add to this but you witnessed but i did i did this uh slash were for lack of a better term the one of the ambulatory attendants that were not official helping it him shouldn't out. Have been. Like, it shouldn't probably have been the that. only the only one that wanted to help him yeah no you know the funny thing is they didn't help because they've seen it one too many times like he's fine meanwhile i'm like, rah, rah, like just. were you um <laughs> like conscious or i was pretty conscious and yeah, up to apparently, a point. Apparently, not <laughs> up to near a the point. end in the yeah. hot tub, though. Yeah, I mean, for, hot tub for safety and, reasons, they needed to get out or hot something. Hot tub and post hot tub, he was not. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't, I've got don't extra leave intel. the drunk I've passed out guy intel. in the hot tub. <laughs> hey, shout out if you've been drinking in a hot tub, though. Like, come on. like. Yeah, it Ooh. says says right on the signs, do not do that. <laughs> Everywhere you go is this, do not mix with yeah. drugs or alcohol. Well, I was uh, just playing all the reindeer games, you know, like, but I was measuring my beers. I had this little, this little measuring cup. He did, cup, he did have a little measuring cup. And I was pouring cup. out in, every time people issued beers, I was pouring it out and making sure my portions were measured. <laughs> I was like, Yeah, but the issue was, Trevor, you didn't have a, um, system, like a limit to it. You just kept filling it up. And then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When you ran out of beer, you right. just went to get more beer right. and kept filling right. it up. That's astonishing. <laughs> it's because you went to the Homer Simpson school of like um, mixology where, remember that episode where he's he's rationing his food and he was just like, the key is to take little tiny bites and he just eats a whole chocolate bar bite. No, 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 no. Yeah, there you go. That's I you. was astonished that all my beer was gone in the morning. Yeah, you, know? you were like, I only had three. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. There was many more than that. It was too. three before dinner. Yeah. Well, because... Like it's a formula we have, right? When you've been drinking with people for, like anyone knows out there, if you if you've got drinking people that buddies or whatever you have, that you have a formula that you show up, you don't even think, you're not even conscious about how you're drinking anymore. You're just like you're talking about the the daily news or whatever. Meanwhile, you're like throwing ping pong balls into cups and like you know passing out cards and giving issuing issuing drinks. Like next thing you know, you're six beers deep and you haven't even lifted a finger. You're like, this is how we do. This is what yeah, we do. The, yeah. best, we do the best part, though, is that you were trying to be an adult. And at the very beginning of the night, when we all started drinking at five and at like seven, I was drinking water. And I was like, Trev, do you want any water? And you were like, I've had two glasses. And I was like, nice, great. Two glasses of water. That was the last water he had <laughs> the entire night. That's true. We the were up for was... eight more hours. Um, and at the end of the night, he this is the part, part of the part he doesn't remember. I tried to feed him water. And he just had his mouth open and just let it all fall out of his mouth and said, I don't want to, I don't want to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> Is this when I was naked on the stairs? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I think I was naked on the stairs with a towel or something. Naked. Yeah, he was, he started undressing as soon as he got inside and said he didn't want to be in his wet swimsuit. Right. And I said, sure. Do you want me? To, I, this, this story you want to come up here? In a second, but sure. Get in here. Yeah, get we're gonna get here. Sophie to finish. We're gonna up throw this. a camera on her. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
There's Sophie, everyone. Welcome, Sophie. It's Thank you for bearing witness. It's this is on. really why. Turn it on. Oh, there. This is really why I get people to hang out. So they well. Can- Thank tell you. Tell you what you missed. Thank you for, um, first of all, for being here and being a supporter mm-hmm. of the show, mm-hmm. Monday Fun Days. But thank you for taking care of him because if not for that, then I would just be here by myself on this episode talking about where's Trev and where's Bob. So now we got a full episode here. So thank well, you for saving yeah, his life. She really was the one who cared. <laughs> She used the word alcohol poisoning. Where we were, we were playing with that. I don't know. Like, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't usually get alcohol poisoning. Yeah. So I was okay. Very, so, I was but listen. Very so, can I go through? I'm going to go through how we got to the potential diagnosis yes. there, yes. Um, which was there was a there was a lot of alcohol involved throughout the entire night. Well, I also I also time. was drinking a lot. Um, when by the time we got into <laughs> I had to finish your wine, By which the, apparently wasn't a good time, idea. No. <laughs> By the time we got into the hot tub, he was kind of like swaying a lot. Yeah, um, like someone who had been drinking. Right. Uh, like Obviously. <laughs> who wasn't swaying? Do you want to let me be, uh, and then, like, continue, tell the story? No, Thank you. Yeah, tell, so me. Never tell me. Never mind right, him. Okay, tell all right, me. Um, he's, he's being defensive. So right. Comes with so, any, like, you know, yeah, no, so we're all in the hot tub, and everyone else is kind of, like, seems like they're still alive, and oh. he's kind of, like, zombie mode, right. like, eyes half, eyes just half bl- closed, he's just like, a bloated he literally, like, no, it's kind of, like, just kind of, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry well, it's of, fine we kind do of this sitting there the like time. that no but by the time when the, when the <laughs> joint when Trump. the joint got passed around to him he would just open it like he wouldn't even like take his hand right. he would just open his mouth for like people to put it in um no. yeah <laughs> um and there was just a lot of like head bobbing like he was falling asleep or like about to pass out so at one point yeah. Um, I was like, let's, you know, let's get out. And he was like, no, <laughs> I was like, all right. So we stayed in for like 12 more minutes. And then it was it's like, so we need to get out. No. So we need to get out. Um, and then he gets out and he like completely tips off the side of the deck. Um, and we have to kind of catch him and bring him inside. Um, and he grabs his sweatpants and walks to the, the stairs and the other guys are still outside and I'm inside. And he just like takes off his swimsuit. Um, and it's like, I need, I need dry clothes. I need dry clothes. Nice. Um, and I was like, sure, of course you do. And then he doesn't put the sweatpants on though. He's just, you just standing. Oh. We got, uh, Tristan here from 1830 delivering some chicken tacos. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Tristan. you. Um, continue. He's so, so, he butt wanna, naked, butt. yeah, um, in the basement with the lights on, um, and just not really moving. And I was like, "Do you want to put these sweatpants on?" He's like, "Yeah, but I'm I'm still wet and it's dry off." That and so it did. No, it was. And then and then I went back out to talk to the guy whose house it was, just to be like, "Hey, maybe we should put him in a shower or something." I don't know what's going on. I come back and I don't see him anymore. And I turn around the corner to the stairs, and he's upside down on the stairs, lying down. With his head like closer to the ground, um, with just the towel, just the towel over any of you know the business loin loincloth. Yeah, it's called. Um, and he's there, and he's just this is two days ago, kind of talking nonsense, like just yeah, it was le- less than forty eight hours ago. Um, nonsense gibberish, kind of, and his friends are obviously like dying laughing. And this is where I tried to give him water, and he he wasn't having any of it. Um, and then at one point it was like seven minutes later and you were like, I'm not wearing any clothes. And I was like, you're right. You're not. And he was like, yeah. yeah. And then you, and then you put your clothes on. It was great. Um, but then the entire night he was on a couch and I was on the floor next to him and he was just like, ow, ow, like your whole, all through the night, shaking, sweating, like fuck shit. Ow, <laughs> ow, fuck, ow, ow, ow. Like that was all I heard <laughs> the, all. Whole, the whole night. Oh, I had. Um, I don't know why I didn't pull the trigger like right away. That was the bad call. Yeah, he didn't. He Kids, didn't. if you're in pain, just, you know, exercise the demons. Yeah, he didn't vomit until the next morning. Yeah, but that was like, it was almost out of necessity because I got nauseous. For the record, yeah. listeners and viewers at home, he said, Pull the trigger, but what he meant is puke, not yeah. shoot himself. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Just don't pull the trigger. <laughs> no, for all the kids out things. there, um, put two fingers down your throat. No, don't right. That's just what it is. Um, <laughs> but unless you have a problem with that in the first place, then don't do that. Well, just talk to someone who can help. Uh, 
so next morning we were wondering what was going on because the guys were all like, oh, he's fine. He's fine. And then they would go down to check on him and they're like, he's not, he, he's like, he's See, that's not, the problem he's is not I haven't fine. Been, I haven't been that not that not fine in a while. And I'm surprised it didn't ring more bells with those guys because they know, like, they've. Why? How fucked up? No, they were like, they were like, no, 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 no. Like he's, he's, he does this. He's fine. And I was like, I've never seen him like this. And they're like, yeah, we've seen him like this a lot. And I was like, I don't think like this though. Cause he was like just covered in sweat, like shaking, like very not. I the shakes real bad. Like I was thinking capacitated. I was decommissioned. Like I was not able to to redeem anything that life offers. Cause I was too busy making sure that Brooks's toilet had the inside of my stomach liner layered all over it so yeah just very and you had the wherewithal though at one point to be like i'm sorry i'm sorry that what did you say you're you're i was like like, i'm sorry i'm in a bad way yeah that was (laughs) like in between like kind of like tears and cries like i'm sorry (laughs) curled in fetal position i'm sorry i'm in a bad way um as if it doesn't go like uh, so i kept going upstairs and like playing with the kids like there's a there's a kid there was a toddler there's a toddler upstairs go Um, play with that yeah no i would go up and play with the toddler and then i'd come back down and take care of him and it was just like the same thing it was double duty poop poop your pants oh did you poop your pants double duty (laughs) who was more difficult to take care of and and who was more fun to be around oh the baby was a delight right and he, he was, was just a horrible, right kind horrible of a menace no baby. but um <laughs> then he finally came upstairs like two hours after everyone else kind of was roused um and you just opened the door and like stood next to the door for like seven seconds or something which was hidden from view from the living room and everyone's like what is he, he where did did he come up like where did he go and then we just like see like slow like old man kind of like hobbling into the kitchen like you were like half all the way bent over I can stand up straight. No, yeah, you you looked like death. Like you looked very bad. Um, and then he went outside and like he was like, I've never, I'm violently ill. I'm not hungover. I'm not hungover. I'm violently ill. You kept saying violently ill. Um, and then we looked up alcohol poisoning just to see. I am violently <laughs> ill. <laughs> and it was like very, you know, sweats, shakes, low body temperature, vomiting. You know, too much alcohol in a small period of time, kind of deal. Um. Yeah, and then I I drove us home in his in his Jeep. Yeah, I had to commission a drive back mm. to the city cuz I was not fit for the road. So and I don't the, even uh, have a license right now. What's the most <laughs> to, Yeah, she didn't have a license. But that didn't matter cuz I had to get incredibly stoned just to be functional. So So what's the moral of the story? Smoke lots of drugs. <laughs> Don't water. Sh- no, I mean water. Uh, yeah, drink water <laughs> periodically throughout the night when consuming alcohol, especially large amounts of alcohol. Are you still hungover? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, see, the problem is today I have a lot of pain from getting overusing the muscles to to get nutrients to go the opposite way out of your mouth and esophagus. Your puke pains. Yeah. Right. So, like, like a weird muscle in your neck that you don't know exists is now pulled right because i'm like like, yeah Yeah. and like all the way from this 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 is like more ab and like inner chest workout than i could do at the gym in a week right because yeah you want good abs you go to a good comedy show or you puke that's you get (laughs) alcohol poisoning and puke all night yeah (gasps) don't do that though kids if you uh i think maybe uh the i i uh don't I try not to get too fucked up like that anymore, mainly because my hangovers are two two day hangovers. Anyone have two day hangovers? Yeah. I don't know when I started doing that, but if I if I really rip it on a Saturday night, I don't feel like a normal human being until like Tuesday at noon. Mm. Like Sunday and Monday are just like depressing like days where I get. And I found done. out that there's not just stomach and head hangovers, there's also brain hangovers where like you're just slow. Right. Like you're just, it's just like you can't, you're not, you don't have the uptake. Like there's just nothing. It's like you're like me all the time. So it's, 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 it's rough. Who knew a depressant would have such an effect? Yeah. <laughs> not so, when you consume mass amounts of it, though. Jeez. I was never a fan of drinking games, but I know you have a group of friends that love drinking games so that as soon, as soon as you're together, you're dishing out drinks, playing the card games, right. and playing beer pong and all yeah. that kind we were of stuff. Playing those games. I was we never a fan them. of that because I'm like, to me, it was always a distraction from drinking. It wasn't that I didn't like drinking copious amounts. I was just like, I can just chug beers all night and do shots with my buddies. I don't need to like. I guess it was kind of like it's kind of an excuse to do that right. anyway because it's right. so like 
the volume that you end up consuming given the nature of those games is is it's all hefty. The it's game you guys like, play is ridiculous. That's You're the like one dishing the, out like three one? shots for you and yeah. five shots for yeah, you. Yeah, so and essentially six shots for I don't you. know if is there a name for that game? Uh cards. Okay. <laughs> cards. Um and there's like seven right. like rows of cards. And if you have you flip them over, there's a whole like preamble to it, but you flip them over and if you have one in your hand that matches you can put it down and if it's on the first row you get to dole out one drink right. but as it goes up so you get to like four and you flip over a two but you have two twos you put that down and because it's on row four you get to dole out eight drinks right. so a lot of times people would be like eight drinks to trevor just the one guy yeah, yeah. right and then yeah. the next one it would be like a good whole friends they no there was there were a few <laughs> that definitely works. got the brunt of it like the your friend fiends and yeah, you fiends. Yeah. it's always it's always the two of you. Yeah, like it was called, never anyone else. The game's called Fiends Gonna Get It slash cards. Yeah. Um, nice. But it goes up to like seven, right? So then if you're at seven, you could kind of be like two for you, two for you, one for you. And there's like seven cards. So then they start over again at one and it just, right. you know. And then they all like laugh and point and wonder why I'm all murked ass. And it's like, you gave me 47 shot like drinks, guys. Like Yeah, and, they do laugh and point. And it's God forbid nice. you say no to one of those, eh? Whatever. They keep me humble. You know, you can yeah. say no. Well, I just, you know, I drink a portion of it. No one actually drinks the eight drinks. Like, right. come on. Right. Yeah, but then you don't, and they're like, you haven't you haven't drunk your seventh drink yet. Come on, come on. Yeah, Watch and then you just play it back. Tell them to sit on it. Okay. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sophie, for bringing him. You're welcome. It was really funny because he was like in the middle of his death throes. He was like, you know, still, still humorous. And you were like, did I'm you, I have to, he was like, are you having fun? <laughs> did you have a fun weekend? <laughs> and then he goes to puke again. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is exactly what I anticipated. <laughs> hey, as long as you had a good time. <laughs> so you, uh, you going for sober September now or what? Uh, I don't know. Nice. Right. right. Apparently it's still the first. So, all right. Should we, uh, all right. So that was officially, that's I mean, that was Trevor's inside. story. That was Trevor's story as told by Sophie. So that was um, unofficially one of the nice first guest stories, aside nice from the audience uh, mic stories I mean, that we nice always that's get. That's like a relic story, but that just happened. That just happened. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which is entertaining, Two but also ago, kind everyone. of sad. Uh, there was part, I think this is part intervention uh, tonight. That's <laughs> what it is. Now that we're <laughs> doing it. A little bit. Yeah, when yeah. Bob's not here, none of these drink stores are cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> just like, you have a problem. Right. Your friends are like, oh, no, he's always like this. And you're like, no, he's not. I don't know. Not yet. Okay. All right. Uh, well, all right. Well, thank thanks you, for, Sophie. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks guys. for yeah. having me. Thanks it. for having a... Uh, having, uh, this is... this. I think <laughs> this should be a very um, Ketchison-centric episode. You're allowed, yes. to leave. You, you're allowed to leave now. Okay, That's great. Thanks. Are yeah. you kicking me out? No, I would we'll, never kick we'll, you. Out. He's kicking me out. We'll bring right? someone else in the hostage. So everyone's never clear. He's, he's I just don't want to keep you hostage. No, you can stay as long as I'm you want. I'm kidding. I'm gonna go. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, bye bye. Okay, uh, let's give it up for Sophie. That's great. Ben. Yeah. So this should, be a, this should be a Ketchison centric uh, episode. So our uh, guest, our next guest, this is a lifelong friend of yours. I know that the two of you, I met you in a production, a theater production, and we got drunk together, That's but you funny, guys have a long history Bob of drinking. Too, so. Oh yeah, we met doing Shakespeare, and then we met Bob doing um, Princess theater with Bride. Princess Bride. Yeah, yeah. And we all got drunk and got to know each other better. So you guys are lifelong friends. I feel like you guys probably have gotten drunk together as young kids, probably, yep. with parents at weddings at funerals you guys got a long history of each other's drunkenness so. we've got lifelong friends yeah, we've yeah, got yeah. long histories of drunkenness let's welcome down to the red carpet cam <laughs> sedgwick cam yeah. cam sedgwick Szechuan. Sedgw like a thorough mispronunciation of my name. Yeah. Wham, bam. Me. Thank you, Cam. Yeah. Cammy, right whammy, call. as he's been known. Whammy, Cammy. Oh, man. Line him up. The <laughs> Sedge. All the nicknames. Uh, so, love everyone. Um, so, how long have you guys known each other? It's been over 20 years. From what yeah, age? Like the, kindergarten? Um, no, it was grade no, it was three. The, yeah, the third grade, Mr. Plants. I came into Toronto. I moved from Newmarket and I came to Toronto. And that September. September, 
for all our French listeners out there. <laughs> <laughs> so not for all our French listeners out there. September. For all our French listeners, cover your ears. <laughs> Joe's about to speak French. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a third grade. It was a third grade. And so we yeah, we, we've gone through the and whole. We didn't, but we weren't. We didn't start everything. drinking right away. Right. <laughs> not third grade. Fourth no. grade. We you you feel you always feel like you're a late bloomer. Uh, and then you look back and you're like, a drunken 14-year-old is <laughs> like, it's so young. You, got you felt like, like a late bloomer sad. as a 14-year-old? Well, a lot of kinda, well I mean, were... it seemed like everybody else was. Right. So, like, it always feels like everyone stuff. else is doing everything first, you know? I think Listen, I... American Pie had come out. The world had changed. Right. 9-11 <laughs> was around the corner. How many apple pies <laughs> did you guys fuck as kids after seeing American Pie? <laughs> I didn't. Have you ever tried it? I didn't. They were chicken pot pies. <laughs> <laughs> Towards the air for our French They're listeners. Yeah, sweet it doesn't pea. work the same with a meat pie. They're sweet yeah. sweet pea pies. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you guys have been drunk. So you, actually, so you, it's funny. The first time Cam and I kind of got drunk was, of course, around the world of theater. And we go to this after school theater program with a uh, shout out to Brian Kennington. Um Woo! BK, uh, he taught us theater when we were young. <laughs> did, did did not let us drink as, as minors. That's <laughs> yeah. He was unaware. It was, of it was recationally. We'll, we'll, well, well, not at the, well, except when connected the, to it. Except for the cast parties in his basement. We won't well, talk that's about a ba- that. That's the point of a basement. Is, that's is, the point of homemade Irish car bombs when you're 16. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So um, yeah, we've got a few. Okay. So we Let's we start but the, the first time we were at. My house, and we have this after school program. So we get home from school, and we we know my mom keeps the, 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 the tequila underneath the sink. And we're like, hey, next actors, to all the other poison. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. in case you get mixed up. And so we're like, hey, actors, they uh, they drink and like act well, right? So <laughs> right. we're going to acting class. So why don't we have a little shoot ski? Nice. But we're like, the perfect crime. We will make ourselves unnoticed. So we take a shot each, roughly. But we make sure the the volume that left the bottle, we fill it up with H two O, baby. <laughs> the same <laughs> looking color stuff. Oh, so man. yeah, so we did that uh, maybe <laughs> once or twice, and then my mom's like, "The hell's going on?" With this? Where's my tequila? Like, like, my like, tequila like, taste like, like water? <laughs> you can like see it floating on top. I'm sure we weren't that drunk. At that class, wasn't the first think, time we were drunk. No, I think we had that, we had alcohol, and I don't think we were drunk. Yeah. But that, that was, was my kind first of a time. first bold like taking it into the real world, not just like getting drunk in a basement with your friends kind of thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you just heard Sophie's description of Trevor on a weekend. Obviously, you've seen him in s- similar states. Yeah, actually, it's, like, actually, it's absolutely inflammatory. Actually, <laughs> I can say Trevor's never, under any circumstances, <laughs> been the most drunk person actually, ever. <laughs> right. Actually, the first time we really got drunk was at my house. And it was yeah. you, me, and David Goldberg. Yeah. And we got a bottle of Smirnoff vodka, that dirty, dirty red label. Yeah. And we got three shot glasses and we sat down on this table and we go, all right, we're going to drink this. Let's see what happens. Shot for shot? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And we did it in less than 30 minutes. Vodka. Three of us on a 2-6. Do the math, kids. I don't remember timing or anything. I do remember. It, it was within an hour. I, I, I sure. remember at one point Done. you walked out onto the street oh. and and lay down in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really like it's a quiet, like sleepy right. little neighborhood in North Toronto where you can get away with doing something like that. Like, but yeah, that was count. like and there I was I remember being like, I don't care. It's like a nice summer night where like right. the pavement is Looking as comfortable at the stars. as anything, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do remember I came in the washroom the next morning and the washroom downstairs, it was covered in toilet paper and crackers. Like like premium plus Salted top crackers, yeah, everywhere. We got it into our heads when we were younger that like, uh, like saltines we'll were the, the anti right. drunk, and right. that like you eat that and you're and you're fine. No, it's McDonald's. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that <laughs> they, no, no, it's double. Want to talk yeah. apple yeah. pies? Yeah. Yeah. If you can get a McRib, that'll <laughs> right. clear you right. We, we, used to, <laughs> we used to crush apple pies. We would sell them out of apple pies. There'd be like a gang of us. The ten of us yeah. come in. They were all fucking blitzed. They were drunk or whatever, and just like give me all of your apple pies. We're like it's a stick up, like yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. In high uh, school, actually, it was in university, buddy. I had two two friends who were twins, and they were tiny, both t- not tiny, but like 150 pounders, but scrappers, really tough. 
and they walked into a McDonald's on 25 cent cheeseburger day. And he walks up, he just marches up to the, uh, the cashier and he was like, I'll take 50 cheeseburgers. Mm -hmm. And the cashier is like, excuse me, 15. And she's, he's like, no, 50. <laughs> they brought him out on two trays, heaps, heaps of cheeseburgers. I, think I remember hearing about and this, then, like people ordering that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was three of my buddies. I think between, I think. I, 25 I, cents? Yeah, they were, yeah, it was it like was Ronald like McDonald House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 67 years old. Yeah, it was one of the first McDonald's, actually. Yeah. McDonald's was cooking the burger yeah, yeah, for yeah. you. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, no, it was like on Ronald McDonald Day when they do it for charity. Like now oh, okay, I think it's like okay. 50 cent day. Right, but right, this right. was like, it Inflation. was a while back. It was, it was like 2000. It was, yeah, was, it was yeah, the 90s. It was the late 90s. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We got sidetracked there. But, um, How are you guys feeling with Obama? I feel pretty, I feel pretty good. Right. I feel good. Yeah. I mean, I miss him. I mean, it's not the same, Bob. We miss you, but we're holding yes, down the fort. Yeah, I, I want you to right listen here. to this episode. Actually, I want you to listen to any episode. But when you listen to this episode, Bob, um, just know that we love you and we care about you. We're having a good time without you. And I hope we're having a good time camping. Yeah. You're open to notes. Yeah, yeah, we're open to notes. <laughs> yeah. notes. Um, so yeah. back to what Lars said. We met because uh, me, Cam, and Lars did a show for the Shakespeare Challenge with Michael Kelly. Shout out Michael Kelly. Shout out Michael you, Kelly. Great, you do great action. things. Shakespearean great. And we did The Tempest. And I think we've alluded to this show before. We talked about this before. Show. So yeah. yeah, backtrack. You do a word search and we'll search it digitally through <laughs> our past episodes. It's not but a thing. Basically, so we uh, we did some Shakespeare. We hung out, and so we would hang out. We would, and you had a spot down at King and Bathurst, right? Yeah, I was staying at. Uh, my family had a condo there. So yeah, so we would like years. finish rehearsals, or even during the shows, like we would finish one well, show, show one show. But I don't know. I feel Dude, like we, we hung did. out. We hung out at Lars's a couple times, didn't we? Yeah, we did. And we uh, we would go there, and it was crazy because we would we would. Um, freestyle and make up all kinds of interesting songs yeah yeah that was how we um, invented the go fuck yourself song and <laughs> yeah. um That's surfing right. at night yeah, yeah. Surfing, Sur surfing at night surfing at night is, is a hit is waiting a to happen beautiful cautionary tale about <laughs> right drinking about late at night drinking set to uh like 50s surfing style music yeah, it so writes I, itself. It was like there on, it was something you know? like it was like we were only fifteen and we're drinking some beer. Uh, uh, and then, uh, then we went uh, surfing pizza. and we didn't see the pier. We were surfing, <laughs> surfing at night. night, something like that. And then picture the music video. We would all be in like slings and like neck braces and stuff. We were surfing, well, like 50 style, surfing you know, at night. Like we're all like we were only sixteen really and tight we're drinking frame. some beer. Yeah, we were taking it very seriously too. Um, and so that. yeah, no, yeah, you you had a very good array of hats and masks and lots of different character as things as, uh, <laughs> as, as we do. So my question for you guys is: you've been you've drank a lot together, you've been around each other. What do you think if you were to ballpark it or nail it? Uh, who leads in? Like who's been more fucked up? Like I'm sure you've seen each other. I'm sure you have nights where you were equally fucked up but if you had it i mean say, i think we're both thinking trev <laughs> yeah are you is that true i mean what is that is that just because i we can go we can go tip for tat i just like, like who's I, in rougher shape well i mean i yeah. don't know maybe who's, i who's taking care of who? the wind more and you know push my limits more and i mean cam did walk <laughs> into a pole <laughs> while carrying a cigarette we took a yeah we uh, we had a, 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 a european trip that we did in our in our mid-20s i that, remember uh, that that added yeah. up to everything that a european trip in your mid-20s does and it involved me walking down uh, <laughs> a street in ireland <laughs> yeah. seeing something like really shitty and cocky with a cigarette <laughs> and then walking straight into a pole so that it, I stopped and the cigarette maintained the trajectory that I was going at. <laughs> you see the cartoons, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. hilarious. Yeah, if I hit a wall, there just would have been my shape. You know the great. noise. Yeah. You know the noise. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The cigarette just flies out. That's great. Uh, what uh, country was that? Where were you? That, that was Ireland. Ireland. That was Ireland. Nice. We, we, we did a lot of drinking while we were there. We, we went to specifically like beer drinking countries, which is yeah. Bavaria, all over yeah. Europe. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Every, and everywhere you went, they said that like, we do it the most here in Czech Republic <laughs> is mess drinking more than anyone. And like, 
They, they're all right. They're all right. They're all, they all the do it the most. Like, we, when, we, when we're there, we're like, you're the most. And then we go somewhere else, and we're like, no, you're the most. Trev is alluding to <laughs> a particular night. We, we did, Tell about Czech Republic. <laughs> we did pub crawls pretty regularly, because uh, you're, you're in a hostel, and you're not exactly sure what you're going to do with the evening. You've seen all the historical things throughout the day. And then they uh, they come around and with like brochures and they're like, oh, come check out a pub crawl. Right. Like only 25 euro. Join us at blah, blah, blah. And you get a wristband and you go from place to place. And so we did this a few times. And uh, the first time or, or one of the first times we're in Prague and we went into uh, we did a pub crawl that started off in a club that took place underground in a Soviet-built uh, bomb shelter that they had turned nice. into a bar. And uh, I'm working in the service industry. I'm an avid tipper no matter where I am. But we discovered that if you tipped, if you threw anything in this jar, they would hear it, they would ring a bell, and they would pour a shot of absinthe for whoever absinthe. was with the people Coming off the walls. Like wow. Just, and it didn't matter what you tip, just throw and, anything and in the jar. all of Czech money is our coins. They're all the Czech crones. So right. you're throwing in like the equivalent of like a quarter, 50 cents, and they pour you three shots of absinthe <laughs> for that. So Makes sense. Quite the system. Yeah, it was, <laughs> that was yeah, the, the start. The exchange that was the start of <laughs> like Canadian dollars to crones right. to absinthe was... was uh, was perfect for right. for our purposes, and uh, that's how it started. Yeah, so we got really drunk. We went to um, another place, and eventually, I like pulled a ripcord. I'm I'm kind of that's that would be in our in our past. I will be the one that yeah, says if, like to your question, like I'll, I'll be the one reason. that's like wow, or you'll check out um, earlier. Yeah, yeah, reason. Right. Sometimes eludes me, but like I'll I'll I'll, I'll yeah I'll, yeah, I'll get out. out I'll back out. I'll be like, there's no. What's like you have to, that to shut, what end? Shut like, down why? mechanism. Or you're like, yeah. yeah, you're like, I want to be good. <laughs> or I just get drunk and grumpy and want right. to go home. Maybe that's what it really is. Uh, but but I decided. But, a, but yeah, maybe you did it a couple of times because when you did it this time, I was like, yeah, I, that's why I laughed so much at the outcome because I was like, this is what you get. This is what you get for shutting it down early. <laughs> so I, so we were in a club and I decided that I was done with it and I was going to go back to the hostel uh, and I have um, the like key card to get me in and I go to. Uh, the the little portion of the fridge where we've uh, put our beers aside and they're these big Euro beers that oh, are just like, like seven ten right like, yeah um and I and I get the cap off of it and I go to our our room our our like twelve person <laughs> it's like dorm one of those big dorm room hostel yeah, where right? everyone's bunk in bunk beds. beds and uh and I realized that I didn't get the key where we locked up all of our phones. And so I'm left with the and grim prospect cupboard, yeah. of sitting in a dark dorm room by myself with without the, even a phone to distract me. To do. Yeah, you know when you forget your phone, you right. just like you just like stare into the abyss. So like it was the that fear, the fear plus, sets plus absinthe. Plus I was I had this huge bottle of beer. Um, I was thinking about that today with phones. Actually, <laughs> what do we do before when you used to go take a shit? What did you do? Did you just sit there think and about think it. about the fact think that you're pooping? You just look like yeah. Hank Hill, kind of like sad and lonely. And yeah, yeah just awkwardly. Did you realize something? Magazines. magazines. Oh, yeah, magazines. They had magazines. Right. There, right. there is the, the magazines. toilet seat magazine. Okay. Well, I didn't have any of that. I right. had uh, a beer in a pitch black room in a dorm by myself, and I started to drink it. And when I woke up the next day, I only had boxers on. Well, I don't know. Maybe I had to interject at this point in the story because when Sam and I came home later that night, Kim went home early. And we're like, you checked out, whatever. Blah. We walk in the front door giggling like schoolgirls. And we walk in. And the first thing we see is Cam lying on the bed, almost buck naked. He's got these tiny little boxers on. And he's like in the flesh. And we're just like... And he Cam's a pretty conservative guy. Like he sleeps like 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 covers up to the chin. Like he's pretty closed off. So he's how do you know how I sleep? In... <laughs> no, I know. You I know, know we had many many sleeps. <laughs> yeah, many yeah, sleeps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he's just in like the near nude, and me and Sam are like, "What the fuck?" Like he's just almost naked, and we have no idea what to make of it. So we just go to bed, and then so he wakes up the next morning. Yeah, and the and the room reeks like uh like a brewery. Or like a bottle return at like a beer store. Like it just stinks of stale beer in the whole room. And my mattress is soaked. It's just absolutely soaked. 
my shirt is on the floor and it's soaked in, in obviously in beer and I just like I'm so tired and uncomfortable and I just want to get away from the wet just the wet feeling and I look over and there's another bunk <laughs> right beside me that's dry and uh, and whoever was said stayed there the night before had neatly folded all of their stuff and and left. So I, I picked up the mattress out of consideration <laughs> for the, not their mattress, mine, for, for whoever was cleaning to be like, this needs some air. Right. So I lift it up. Attention. And, uh, and then I crawl into this bed. And I'm, just as I'm pulling this blanket up onto me, it's also the time that everyone else that's traveling in Europe has decided that they're going to get up and like, go to a museum right. and, I, and I'm just like trying to shield myself <laughs> from the sun and someone looks at me lying in this bed and they're like wasn't there that really sweet French girl reading a book there last night and I was like she's gone and just the blanket over myself <laughs> she's left and, uh, and, and it'd, be, it'd become apparent that I had um, opened the beer maybe had a sip or two of it and then uh, proceeded to fall asleep and just somehow <laughs> just, just dumped yourself dumped myself in like a massive full like tall a full beer. one enough enough that it has become known as the beer shower. That is the morning yes. of like, the beer tell, shower. Tell them about the beer shower. But no beer, does, beer does a funny no thing to you bed. though. It beer isn't it acts as an astringent, so it, it like your skin feels like tight and like mm. and and weird. Yeah. From changing kegs, I know that like if you get sprayed with beer and then you don't wash it off right away, you just feel like, like <laughs> bizarre. It's strange. There was a so, yeah. That was, was that. It's and yet I would say Trev is still been drunk than me. Yeah, still yeah. Drunk I still own it. I still remember the other time you checked out early in Berlin, and I remember our the way to get to the hostel was like that way, and we were in a a, a corner restaurant that you could see that all the outside of the glass, and we just knew that that was the way to get home. And Cam's like, I'm checking out. I'm going home early. I'm gonna be responsible. Whatever. Gonna, he goes to leave and he's like to do walks out the door and he just goes that way <laughs> and he just with such confidence walks in the opposite direction we're like oh yeah you're going home are you okay <laughs> made See it you home it. yeah made it home yeah. somehow yeah it's great yeah. any I, uh go yeah. ahead well i mean I've, I've had luck with with making it home despite everything um Oh, yeah, the autopilot that we can rely on sometimes, eh? Where suddenly you're like, I got home. I don't know, I got home. It's it's like uh, it's it's nature, you know. It's like the, the the beautiful dance of the cosmos when a drunk makes it home. A couple times when I was in New York City, I went out and there, like, mm. they serve you to like five. Like that's kind of the like they have the bars stay open forever, and you just kind of at some point you just check out and are left to fend for yourself in the middle of Manhattan. But I, my trick was I used to have the hotel card in my pocket so that I could just be like, <laughs> and just hand that to him and be dumped out in front yeah. of the, the hotel. And it worked. It worked a couple of yeah. times. Our, our, Sorry, our, our buddy in Europe got pissed because the card wasn't working in the door and he like oh, yeah. shouts at the guy on the, that, that like, and it has the card changed and, and takes us back up to the door and it's like, see, my Dude. thing doesn't work. And we realized we were on the wrong floor right, right at that moment. So, right. so there was another dorm of people just with the, do the, the knob <laughs> like the wiggling the all night. <laughs> <laughs> We terrorized that entire continent. We, we we went with the best of intentions, and it was terrible. We're gonna be the best Canadians ever. And everyone's like, Canadians are jerks. But if if I may, if 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 I'm gonna be on, and thank you so much for you having may. me on. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank yeah, yeah. You. You're doing Can great. You finally made it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm 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 happy to be here. Number you want 20. to tell any other story? Well, any other, I, uh, if you debauchery? want to hear the drunkest. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear a been. fucked up story because remember Bob's stories usually involve a guy's face being ripped off, fights with the cops, someone yeah. overdoses. So like, yeah. Imagine, give us your best. imagine that, but like smaller, right? Sadder. Okay. <laughs> Much sadder. Buckle up. Um, I was uh, buckle up. When so we're both born in '88, and we discovered in high school, or everyone discovered at the same time, that if you scratched out the middle part of the eight, uh, you could change your ID to say that you were born in '83. So mm. that gives you a good five years of, of drinking wow. that you were supposed to have beforehand. Smart. I, oh, yeah. yeah, we made a monopoly. <laughs> we, were we made a monopoly on that. But I had so I had my but I was going through the graduated licensing service like progression so you don't want to scratch your like your good id because then you get pulled over and get in trouble because right. you have like a, uh, a false ID. ID, yeah. so it was my g1 that was scratched and my regular g2 that wasn't scratched and i went to uh a toronto uh staple timeless 
uh, bar on uh, college. college. You know that one, Jimbo? Timeless. Timeless. No, it's, it's timeless? Timeless? just it's outside Bueller. of. Uh, it's timeless. It's right outside of um, Kensington Market. And uh, I was meeting a friend there, and I had uh, probably a two sixer of uh, Appleton rum, uh, oh, and I had already it. been drinking that. So I was I was quite drunk when I arrived, enough that I showed the guy the wrong ID, uh, and he uh-huh. was um, he was like telling me that it's like he's like this isn't your right ID, this isn't you, like or no no this is you this is you, but you're like you can't drink, you're, like you're not old enough. But uh, oh, you didn't give him the tampered one. I, I got gotcha. I gave him the wrong yeah. one. So yeah. I w- but I was terribly confused by this because I was so sure that I'd given him the right one. And so he and he's this Jamaican fellow that runs Timeless. He's like, man, you're not old enough. You yeah. can't come in. <laughs> and in my drunken brain, I was like, appeal to him. I'm like, yeah, man, of course I am. I can come in. And I did like a like a horrible Jamaican accent. Oh my god. And was uh, convincing enough that he let me in. <laughs> Wow. And uh, sold me at least a drink at the bar. And I went into like the back patio area where I got the bottle of Appleton's back out again. And then, and then nothing. And then <laughs> darkness envelops me. And I don't remember what happened for the next, I can't even tell you how long it was. But the next thing I remember, I'm walking up the on ramp to a highway. Oh. And Mama. I can only figure that it's the maybe the Gardner Expressway. That I've made my <laughs> way from college and Spadina <laughs> to walking onto the Gardner. What? And uh, and a cabbie, a, 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 an angel, <laughs> pulls over driving a cab. And he's like, you're in. in trouble. This isn't right. You have to get in. And I was like, yes. And I got in. And uh, I, I I can't remember what I was able to communicate. I don't remember what I was able to say. The 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 confusion had set in at this point. The panic, the like, the, the just the, the the fear and the unsettlingness of fear just like you, you don't feel right in your body. You don't know where you are, and just like everything's wrong. And at some point, he where we've gone along the highway, and he's pulled off, and he's let me off somewhere, and I'm getting on a bus. And all I know is that I'm getting on a TTC bus. That's all uh, I can recognize because right. I don't know any of the streets. I don't know any of the signs. Go. I don't know which direction I'm going. I'm just getting on a TTC bus. And it's like, that's got to be going the right way. And I'm cr- and I'm crying on the back of this bus. I'm like, like this is like a this is like a 16, 17 right. year old kid like who's gotten himself into some like, trouble. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. And I don't know where I am. And then all of a sudden, pre Uber kids, all right? Yeah, pre pre even them announcing the street that you're going by, like it's before the like the automated things that you are need like, like an old paper map, fine, you know? Like, it, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, phones are no good for any of this. Uh, so I'm just like uh, j- just deep in this like just horrible feeling, and all of a sudden, like I just recognize a street, and I'm like. I know that. I know, like that's that seems familiar. And then another one, even more familiar, and another one. Then then a couple storefronts, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm actually near where I live. I was heading on a bus, maybe maybe on Danforth, maybe one north of Danforth, um, whatever that is, uh, uh, the East End. I don't remember. Uh, yeah. oh, Either Con- way, Con- Mortimer, or Mortimer or Connor or something like that, and. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm at Woodbine and Danforth, which is where I, I lived with my parents at the time. And I like get off of this bus and I like stumble down and like just lie straight down in bed and uh, live, sleep. Live and, and, the- and then I fought six cops <laughs> and got stabbed <laughs> thousand times. The man's face <laughs> off. That uh, was the drunkest I ever was, but it's not officially a drunken disorderly because I got, uh, it wasn't on record. Wasn't quite disorderly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we so, definitely have drunken. The interesting thing about that, though, I like that because uh, say what you want about alcohol or the situation you're in, but when's the last time riding the bus was so exciting? Right, like <laughs> if you weren't that shit faced, like it would just be a normal bus ride. You'd be like, oh, there's my stop, but there was like an epic adventure that you had to figure out and solve. Yeah. One, one time I passed out on the subway after prom from uh, the alternative school that I went to. And I was, again, at Woodbine. And I must have taken this subway going uh, east. But when I woke up, mm. I was going west, further east 
further west than where I would have picked it picked up the the street the subway. So you really so I'd clearly up. like gotten on, passed out, gone a whole way along the line, gone all the way back, and then woken up somewhere around like the middle <laughs> point. But on the right direction, again, right. to another concerned citizen from this great city right. that was just like you've been asleep for a long time. Are you okay? And it's like, in, in a, like my, like my first time in a suit, basically. Like, uh, like I'm the guy from the commercial. Haven't you seen it 58 times? Yeah. I feel like everyone's got their story. TTC pass out story or like their blue bus. Story well, I did where that. Just, like, I, wake up I was taking the vomit comet up to young and Lawrence from downtown. And I woke up at shepherd and I was like, fuck. <laughs> and then I, I passed out again and woke up at Finch and it was like the, it was turn around so i was like well i guess i'm just gonna sit this one out and turn it around and i woke up again at davisville which is south of, of lawrence for all you non-torontonians so i had to get off and wait for the next uh the next one and then i woke up again at shepherd so i just went to my dad's house because he lives at shepherd i was trying to get to my house i was like fuck it i'm just going to the nearest place it's, it was like like 5 30 in the morning i'm like i just want to go home i just slept on the bus all night so can't awful. get off the bus <laughs> thank yeah. you tdc for providing me a place to sleep all home night. safe so many right. times yeah, yeah. uh what's, what's the upshot what's the this feels like what's the upshot what's, what's the, an upshot what's the, posi- what's the positive out of all this oh, seems, i mean it um, seems that when you're on ttc it's good but when you're not on it you're like fuck this bus or streetcar get off get out of the way we have an audience uh, scenario here. This is Sophie on the mic again. Hi. Oh, hey. Uh, I want Trevor to tell the story of his what? eyebrow scar. No, I've already told that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We oh, have talked about that. that. I forget what episode, but that was early I, I on. I definitely talked about it. Um, I can tell you about the time that he shaved them off when he was at camp. <laughs> that sounds fun. For another time. You shaved your eyebrows <laughs> off? <laughs> How infuriated was your <laughs> Te- mom? Technically, it doesn't apply to the episode because there was no alcohol involved. Right. We were kids, and uh, we shaved our eyebrows off at, at summer camp. Best part you, was is that Cam held out the longest, and, and was Trev like, convinced me to do it. He was it. like, "This is asinine. Like, this is so dumb." Yeah. And we were like twelve, <laughs> and we were at summer camp, and our counselor was like, "Wouldn't it be great?" If your parents came to pick you up tomorrow and none of you had eyebrows? he I remember hearing him say something like, well, facial hair grows back the next day. So eyebrows are facial hair. They should grow back the next day. Nice. Which I thought was his mistake in logic for the next like 20 years before I was like, no, that fucking asshole just wanted to shave my goddamn miser. Right. So, so he, sh- you pervert. shaved yours first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You saw the result and, and then like, still no, decided to do it, or you the didn't result do it? on him wasn't even as bad. Too. Yeah, for any of you like, not like watching the, at home, bl- losing blonde <laughs> eyebrows, like <laughs> you lose these, and I just <laughs> look like an absolute so like, always scared, like, like, yeah, sociopath, like just a frog <laughs> like that wants an, to like kill you. Alien. Like I can't. Uh, and like no beard, so he was just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. We were like this for yeah. months, oh months. It took like five, six months for the the really? eyebrows to grow back. And this is in like August that happened, so September. It looked like comes... someone someone drew a face on a thumb. It was like, it was <laughs> he went worst. back to school. September <laughs> <laughs> comes. It's like, like needless to say, it was not the next day that it grew back. <laughs> feel like and the... they never quite came back right. And they go I always every feel like now. Janet. Like Cam's mom was like blaming me. She's like, Cameron shaved his eyes, his eyebrows off, and I, I know it was like Trevor's fault. <laughs> yeah, everyone probably. was just like, probably, probably the, I said that. What are the odds <laughs> both Trevor and Cam w- would get leukemia? <laughs> <laughs> they probably, you probably looked like you had gone to sick kids. Probably no, we you had like sick. a like. You had the rest of your hair. Whatever okay. was an appropriate haircut at the time. Trev probably had the little flip up with the frosted tip. Frosted tips and then no eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Because let's do it. Image is important. Let's do it again. <laughs> let's do it again. No. Oh, oh my god. In favor of shaving our eyebrows. Let's yeah. do it. No. Um, well, we appreciate the guests, the, all the guest work we've had on here. Yeah, this is yeah, I appreciate it. This is a good one. I've learned more about you guys. Yeah, yeah. We got a, a lackluster applause from our studio audience. And the crowd That's goes mild. We got a smattering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, make sure that uh, where if you're listening to this and you want to watch it, the full episodes are on YouTube. You can hit us up on uh, Facebook and also Instagram at 39DD Show. If you want to chat with us, you can hashtag 39DD Show and we'll get it. You can post and share. 
tell us your crazy drunk stories. If you've ever shaved your eyebrows off and you want to tell us about that, just hashtag 39DD show. Uh, what else? Uh, what else we got to plug? If you want to join a show, come for a taping. Yeah, we, we're here every Monday. We encourage you to come down. Uh, we're friendly. We don't bite during the show. So that's that's good. If you just come on down. And, and every other episode except tonight, if you had come down, you would have met Giant Bob as well, who is uh, a seven-foot uh, giant. So yeah, so it's a good thing you didn't come tonight because he's not here. He's not here. But that's not going to happen. He's camping. He's currently sleeping with the rest of the bears in uh, – I don't know where he is exactly, but uh, when he comes back, we're going to be on episode 21. So it's a, it's a camping episode. Cam. Oh. Ping. Yeah. I like Good night, it, everybody. Camping. <laughs> um, we should also say this week, uh, we're going to do the thing that we always do. But um, if you're listening to this, stay tuned for the next episode because it's going to be recorded during TIFF, which means it'll be after some TIFF parties. Yeah. I know the day after, the mo- I think Wednesday, we're going to a young filmmaker's party. Bob's coming. Yeah, we're um, going to get some good promo stuff yeah, there. Yeah, we're going to do a photo shoot, and we're going to be at a crazy TIFF party because we didn't talk too much about that tonight. Um, we want to reiterate this because it's an important part of the 39 Drunken Disorderlies journey. This podcast started as the development of a TV series or like uh, like something you'd see on Netflix or HBO or Vice, dark comedy, kind of <laughs> fucked up tomfoolery. But uh, during TIFF, we're going to be we're sort of putting together our pitch package and the Bible and the pilot episode to kind of like shop it around. We're schmoozing at TIFF parties. So yeah. Yeah. uh, Just trying to get some people interested. It's a good idea. So yeah. So if you like this, help us out by sharing this out with a handful of your friends uh, and get some eyeballs on this because we're going to be taken to the next level. So basically the, the podcast, this serves for, these are like the writing sessions for the episodes. So most of the episodes of the live of the of the scripted sort of reenactment show are going to be reenacting Bob's real life stories. And we might have a little um, um, we creative license with some of the stories as well. But uh, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, you never let the, uh, let the truth get in the way of a good. Yeah, yard, they're sort yeah. of uh, true stories. But uh, <laughs> stay tuned for that. So uh, next week's tip, Bob will be back next week. So He'll if you back. miss Bob and you're like, fuck this podcast, I tuned in to listen to a giant's crazy stories about ripping people's face off and fighting cops. He'll be back talking about that. We'll next be doing week. episode 21. So it'll be legal to drink in America, which means the world. Fuck Ooh, yeah. Yeah. 21. You can't drink it 21 months. 21 weeks? 21. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess. 21. The number 21. 21. The number. Keep this podcast going for We've like been doing this for 21 years. weeks. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how yeah. if Bob has. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but this was great. We got to hear some uh, stories. We got to go deeper on Ketchison. Yeah. And, you all uh, got to hear a little bit about us and. Um, <laughs> Bob's, and uh, Bob's all of our uncles today. All right. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Usually I'm the one with the dad joke. Bye.